So good morning or good night, depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to another anniversary album review of The Shield Dude on a Couch. Uh, I'm joined by Señorita Sabrosura, who I haven't seen in a long time. So Señorita, how are you? Good, good. Yeah, it's been a, it's been uh, a long time. I've, I've been missing doing videos with you. Yeah, you've been busy doing stuff. So today yeah. we... We are brought back together by a band that we both love, and it's Nine Inch Nails. And we're celebrating their third full-length album, The Fragile, which was released on September 21st, 1999. So it's turning 25 years old. So, uh, so yeah, this is an album that, yeah, uh, it's a double album. It's like an hour and 43 minutes of music. I think it's their longest album to date. Uh, so, Señorita, uh, like, like, let's, you know, we'll talk about, like, uh, earliest memories of listening to this album. We'll talk track that we love. And then we'll obviously say at the end, like, 25 years later, how this has held up. So, Señorita, uh, tell me about your, you, you know, your initial, like, uh, impressions when you listen to this well, you know, uh, everybody fell in love with uh, Nine Snail with the Downward Spiral. And I imagine after creating that masterpiece, it must have been very difficult to do something after that uh, for the band and for the fans to like not compare uh, the new material with the Downward Spiral. And I know it has like a mi mixed reviews, but... For me personally, I like it. I like how different they went, and it was five years after the the that release of the Downward Spiral, um, uh, the fragile. Like I like the 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 mix of the layers, the guitars, the sings, and <laughs> I know you said like uh, maybe it drags a little bit at the end. Uh, with the all the electronics and the mute and the instrumentals, but I like that. But I know it, it, it not everybody likes that. Uh, maybe it was a little bit too long, but I enjoy it. And I think it, this is an album to listen more than once. Like uh, the first time I listened, I was like, "What the hell did I listen to?" But the more I listen, and with years later, uh, I think it grew on me more. Yeah, I, I remember when this came out because uh, it, it had been uh, five years since the Downward Spiral. Yeah. And they played the 1999 MTV Music Awards and they played the Fragile. Uh, they played that song and it was, you know, it was a lot of hype, you know, it was the return of Nine Inch Nails. So I was reading background on this album. So this album is a follow-up to the Downward Spiral, the story. So yeah. the main character, he, you know, he talks about depression, drugs, loneliness, but this is a more electronic layered album. Uh, he worked with Alan Mulder as a producer on this one, which I think Alan also worked with Smashing Pumpkins and other artists at that time. And this was the first Nine Inch Nails albums where they had like uh, electronic uh, tracks without uh, lyrics. Yeah, all yeah. instrumental. All instrumental, because after that, they did that, but this was like the first time that they did this. And yeah, it got some mostly positive reviews, but it got some negative reviews. For example, I yeah. was reading <laughs> the negative reviews that this <laughs> got, and 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 he gave it a 5 out of 10, and Pitchfork, you got a lot of people. like a two? In 1999, they give it a two out of ten, but they in 2017 it's an 8.7 out of ten. So I guess uh, wow. it, it aged well for them because from a two to an 8.7. Yeah. Uh, but there were some positive reviews, like Rolling Stone gave it a four out of five, Spin gave it a nine out of ten, and actually USA Today gave it a person a perfect four out of four. Okay. Uh, Entertainment Weekly an A minus, The Guardian a four out of five. So Mostly, I think it got only two, like, uh, not so good. And MAE and Pitchfork, I don't know, but they fuck up a lot of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, I, I don't know what they like because uh, they never give a good score. It's very rare. 
it's it's yeah there's some yeah it's always like a negative score but yeah i do remember when this came out and i actually bought it uh at that time i think i don't know about you but when i did the, buy it when it came out in 1999 at that time i think music listeners were more used to listening to longer stuff yeah uh, uh, I think it's nowadays, album. yeah, people were used to long albums, so it wasn't like a stretch. Uh, and plus, I thought it's been five years, so uh, it's been, it had been a long time without music. Uh, and I like the, the, the moodiness of this record and things. Uh, they released a few singles. Uh, I think the most, I, re I was reading the most popular single was We're In This Together Now. Uh, yeah. Which is a more accessible track if you think about it. Yeah, and it's it's weird. It's like the only ambiguously positive song in the album. Yes, yeah, because the and other it, single it, that they people really... consider it even like an intense love song. I think it's more of a survival song. Yeah, that's what I thought, but I read that some people consider it like a love song. Yeah, okay. Uh, people consider, think that everything is but, a love song. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, but it's more like a, a survival. To, uh, we're, we're in this together. And then in 2020, that was the phrase everybody used. Yeah. yeah. And uh, this album has, I know that it's a... Uh, it's an album that it got uh, like mixed reviews, but uh, there's songs from here that have been used in shows. For example, Somewhat Damage was used in The Walking Dead. Uh, it was the only good part of that episode when they played that song. <laughs> <laughs> I, I consider that a, like a good intro to the album. Yeah, that was a good intro to the album. And uh, I remember the other single that was actually a B-side that they uh, put at the last minute was Star Fuckers Inc. Which was a great song, and the music. Uh, do you remember the music video for that one? No. Well, the music video was like him throwing like stuff at like the faces of Fred Durst, Marilyn Manson. Oh, so, I think it was like a parody or something. Like that yeah, song. he was. Yeah, he he took aim at them because obviously at that moment, I think Marilyn Manson and Red Red Durst's relation he had been strained. Yeah, and I think I he hated Limp Biscuit. And I know uh, this is a, a trivia for you. Uh, in 2000, uh, Limp Biscuit in the chocolate starfish and the hot dog flavored water, they took a line from Nine Inch Nails and used it in one of their songs. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, I I'm, dr I'm dropping <laughs> some facts that you didn't know. You know, but, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not that uh, well, not that well versed with the biscuit yeah uh, yeah so yeah so uh i did so did, uh, i'm guessing you listened to it did you listen to it in 1999 or a few years later i listened to it in 1999 then a few years later when i started working on hot topic like i listened to whatever was available from nine inch nails yeah but was yeah. your first nine inch nails album the downward spiral yeah, i think so yes yeah my mine too uh so yeah, let's talk about favorite tracks. And we can talk about, uh, since this is a double album, I think we can talk at least, I think, five tracks because it's a long album. So tell me, like, the, your favorite tracks from this well, album. Well, like I said, I like the intro, Somewhat Damaged. And, uh, but my favorite song, it's The the Day the World Went Away. Uh, I, I like that because it always gave me, like, shoegaze vibes uh it's sometimes it's like loud and ear piercing but it's also slow and the guitars are beautiful so i like that song a lot uh uh the frail i think that, that like the first part of the album like oh i like all those songs um i like the frail because of the instrumentals the melody of the the piano the scent um uh but if we talk, uh, what is the name? Uh, the Big Come Down and The Wretch are uh, some of my other favorites. Uh, this is an album, like, you have to listen more than once. And, like, 
completely immerse yourself, like pay attention. Yeah, it's a it's that headphones type of record. Yeah. That you like and immerse yourself into it. What uh, are your tracks? I really love the wretched, uh, which follows the frail. And it's a I, I don't, it's a it's not a very uplifting song. I like it when he's like, you now you're one of us, the wretched. And the, I love the tan 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 tan. <laughs> it really builds uh momentum yeah, it to it. Uh, I like the fragile, uh, like yeah. I won't let you fall apart. And I like the moodiness that that track has. Uh, I gotta say that I like the first disc better than the second disc. Okay. I think the first disc is is the is the best one. Uh, and also I would say that because on the second disc is the where they have more of the instrumentals at the end. Mm -hmm. But I like the song "Into the Boy," uh, which is on that's the another thing. Yeah, that's a great track, and I think there was a music video for that one. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think the music video was like you 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 see like hairs of people, and they gave you like close up. It was really a uh, strange uh, <laughs> type of song, uh, but I really enjoyed it, and. Uh, also, it's worth noting there's a few tracks here that he was uh, dedicated to his grandmother, uh, like a song I'm looking forward to joining you finally, uh, which is almost at the end. Uh, but the other song, uh, how many songs have I given? Uh, I think I have one more. Uh, <laughs> the other song that I would say that I really enjoy a lot is The Great Below, which closes the first disc. I, I just love how Trent closes albums because you... Uh, in the downward spiral you have heard, but in the great below, it's like it goes, you you get that like that synth and electronic, and then is and when he so in the great below, and you got the da -na -na. it's like all the layers that he does. He's like uh something that Trent Reznor is really good at is like uh he uses technology as an advantage and not as a crutch. Yes. Exactly. Uh, it's not is some, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe Mr. Uh, Billy Corrigan will take classes <laughs> with Trent Reznor. Yes, yeah, Trent Reznor has always done it in a way uh, that is great. So there's some albums yeah, that, that enjoy it adds more so than much others. more. Yeah, mm -hmm. instead of a crutch or instead of gimmicky, it adds uh, layers and it adds more to the songs. Yeah, so yeah, I think those are like the five tracks that. Uh, because I like Star Focus and we're in this together now, but I think I've heard them so much that I think the deep cuts are the better songs well, on this another, record. Another deep cut, well, another, I don't know if it's a deep cut, but it's on the second part, is in uh, La Mer. <laughs> I like that song too. Yeah, I, no, I think that's a deep cut. Uh, and yeah, so yeah, 25 years later, uh, like how, how would you say like your like this has age for you, like uh do you go back to it a lot? Um I I think when I listen to this album, I listen to the album as a whole, not like other national uh songs that I pick one here and one there. Uh this is an album like I I like to listen to a whole and yes, I come back to this album a lot. Uh I like it. For me, it has aged very well. Um uh, and the reason that I listen to the whole album is that I find that sometimes uh, the songs bled into each other. Like, you don't know when yeah. one ends and the other continue. That's what I like to listen to the whole album. Uh, yeah. But that's a good thing. It's not, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Um, so, yeah, for me, it has aged very, very well. Yeah, I think it's intentional because he goes from the frail to the wretched. Like, almost you, it's very subtle the way. Uh, because sometimes when I listen to this album, I think it's meant to be like it's like it sounds like it's a a song that that is a some parts sounds like it would be like a continuous song. Yeah. Uh, like I uh, I don't know if he's ever played this album in full from front to back, but I think I believe it hey, back. Hey. He has played his song from this album, but I don't think in full. Maybe I don't know. Trent Reznor, if you watch this for the twenty fifth <laughs> anniversary. Do the fragile from front to back. 
<laughs> that would be in, that would be an interesting. It's an hour and forty three. It would be an hour and forty three minute concert. And I could just in, because I know you've seen uh, you're one of the lucky ones, not the <laughs> wretched that have actually seen Nine Inch Nails live. And I know it's all uh, the music, but he uses a lot of visuals. Um. Uh. Well, I he uses more like uh lights and lasers, like not so many visuals. Uh. They're very so subtle. Um, I seen them twice. Once at the Aragon in Ch here in Chicago, and then uh two years ago um, at Riot Fest, and he opened with somewhat damage. That's at least from Riot Fest. Yeah, it was very a, intense. A, I bet. So uh, for me, twenty five years later, I think this is an album that really has aged well. Uh, it if you see the critics. Pitchfork went from a 2.0 to 8.7 in 2017. They had to uh, admit that they, they were wrong. They were wrong. Yeah, you have to admit that you were <laughs> wrong. I think it's an album that maybe when it came out, it was really ahead of its time. But I think Nine Inch Nails has always kind of been ahead of their time. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a great concept. To me, the only critique that I had that you, you mentioned is that I think it drags a little bit at the end because... At the end, it has too many instrumentals each after the other, and it actually ends with an instrumental, yeah. uh, which is the song the Right song With Decay, album. and it's like a six-minute uh, album closer. Uh, so uh, it's cool because uh, it's not bad music. It's not bad electronic music, but I think that it, that it drags a little bit at the end for me, but I still think it's an amazing album. I think it's, it was an important record for the band to make uh, because obviously there was a lot of pressure about after the downward spiral. And after this, uh, I think they didn't, didn't, I think the next album was with Tiff, right? In 2005? Uh, let me check. Hold on. Yeah, because uh, I think they, they took a while after this one. Uh, I also think this is an album that... Uh, that you need to listen to from front to back. This is not like a singles type of album because I think when you listen it from beginning to end, you get more of the vibe of what this album is all about. So uh, uh, yeah, I, they didn't put anything until 2005 with Tease, uh, but they put like remixes and uh, live albums. Yeah. So with Teeth turns 20 next year, so uh, next year, we're going to talk about that one, too. Uh, because, yeah, I, it's... I, a, I, I like that album. I, I like that album a lot, too. Uh, mm -hmm. But we'll talk about that next year. So uh, we want to... So, yeah, in conclusion, this has aged really well. Uh, it's actually, I actually don't have this one on vinyl. Uh, Me neither. I, I, yeah. I've been looking for it, and I haven't seen it on vinyl. Yeah, I had it on CD, and... I had it on CD. I, yeah, but I still listen to it, and stream. and I think it's it's a uh, stream, yeah, stream, whatever. I think it's still very, it's a very vital album. So, uh, I I wouldn't recommend this album to start as for a Nine Inch Nails fan. No, I, I think I I would have them start with the Downward Spiral. Okay. <laughs> or do you think, or, or maybe. Pretty hate machine. Pretty hate machine. <laughs> I think if if you have if you live under a rock and have never listened to Nine Tales, I I will start with Pretty Hate Machine and then the Downward Spiral. Yeah, you know there was a song before they put out this album that I wish they they would have put it on this album. Uh, it was on the on a soundtrack. Uh, the Perfect Drug. I love that track. Yeah, yeah, it, it's a standalone track. Uh, but yeah, I remember that track. It's an awesome track. So uh, we want to know from you, Couchers, what do you think of Nine Inch Nails, The Fragile, 25 years later? Comment down below. What are your favorite tracks? Uh, do you think this has aged well? Or do you think this is a album that you don't go back that often to? Uh, so uh, coming up next... Uh, the, there's going to be an, also an anniversary for American Idiot by Green Day, which turns 20. Uh, it came out the same day as this one. And there's a new Is It That Bad this weekend as well. So 
Uh, I know, uh, San Rosura, what, what's next for your channel? Because I know uh, you've been busy with other stuff. Yeah, I, I'm not sure right now. Uh, we, we took a pause uh, because I've been busy. Um, I have a, a pop-up market uh, and I've been working with my page uh, uh, to sell my jewelry, my art. Uh, and this weekend it's Riot Fest. So maybe you will see some clips from Riot Fest. Uh, yeah, I, I'm sure uh, we will see clips from Riot Fest. I'm so... see <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> <laughs> I still have my Slayer ticket from where they were going to play Puerto Rico in 2016. <laughs> that never happened. Uh, Did you give me so your money he, back? Yes, they gave me my money back. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. So there you go, Couchers. Today, September 21st, or when you're seeing this, uh, listen to The Fragile by Nine Inch Nails loud. So yeah. until next time, this is Hector, the shield dude on a couch. Señorita Sabrosura. And we'll see you next time on another album review, anniversary, whatever. <laughs> so thank you and goodbye.